When and how did this guy go from being a Razzie regular to generating Oscar buzz? Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we'll be discussing the redemption of Adam Sandler. How we doing? Although he previously starred in the critically panned film entitled Going Overboard, it was Saturday Night Live that launched the Sandman into popularity at the dawn of the 1990s. Okay, now it's about the time on the show where I lose it <laughs> and my dad calls up and yells at me. Here we go. I can't believe she did this to me! Depending who you asked, Sandler was either the sketch comedy's funniest cast member or the most obnoxious. Sandler's critics were quick to point out his similar characters and tendency to break in sketches. His fans, however, appreciated his unique comedic timing in classic skits like Canteen Boy and Lunch Lady Land, not to mention the Hanukkah song. Put on your yarmulke, here comes Hanukkah, so much funaka to celebrate Hanukkah. Alas, NBC seemed to side with Sandler's haters. Despite still being under contract for two more years, Sandler was fired from SNL in 1995 along with his castmate Chris Farley. Oh, hear that, hey? The exact reasons for Sandler's termination remain debatable, although Lorne Michaels was apparently pressured to raise ratings by bringing in new cast members. The tipping point may have been Sandler and Farley's childish antics, which have been rumored to include mooning people in a limo and making prank calls. But there's last night in particular, I thought your comedy stepped over the line! While NBC kicked him off the small screen, Sandler would find greater success on the big screen. Sandler cemented his star power with Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore, both of which went on to become cult classics and provided the namesake for his production company Happy Madison. Just stay out of my way, or you'll pay. Listen to what I say. How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay, I just may. What do you say? Even Bulletproof, one of his more forgettable films, opened at number one at the box office. With The Wedding Singer, The Water Boy, and Big Daddy, Sandler headlined three comedies in a row that grossed over $100 million. For audiences, particularly millennials, these remain some of the funniest and most quotable movies of the 90s. What stinks for sure? Love stinks? No stinks! Critics, however, just didn't get Sandler's wacky brand of humor, making him synonymous with one star film reviews. Stop making fun of me. In fact, Sandler went on to win a Worst Actor Razzie for his performance in Big Daddy, which in retrospect seems kind of unfair. Scoop of Steve! Damn you! You like that? You think that's funny, me getting hurt? Sure, he's basically playing another man-child, but Sandler nevertheless scored some big laughs and handled the film's sentimental scenes surprisingly well. I love you. What? You don't have to be scared, it's all right. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for his next star vehicle, Little Nicky, which earned Sandler two more Razzie nominations. Playing a character whose voice sounded like fingernails on a chalkboard, the film not only bombed with critics, but bombed big time financially. I'm not a monster. Release the evil. Fortunately, Sandler's next offering would be completely different. Director Paul Thomas Anderson was a fan of Sandler's comedies, including Happy Gilmore and Big Daddy. Although Variety dubbed Sandler the king of moronic farce, Anderson saw untapped potential, casting him as the shy, withdrawn Barry Egan in the romantic dramedy Punch Drunk Love. In this film, Sandler played a generally nice guy who's prone to sudden, violent outbursts. I have to go to the bathroom. But unlike Sandler's previous roles, Anderson brought out a raw humanity in Sandler that audiences had never seen before. It was a role that played to Sandler's acting strengths while also bringing out his unexpected dramatic range. Listen to me. What's your name, sir? Answer me! Even critics like Roger Ebert, who had never given Sandler a positive review before, praised his performance, which earned him a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor, Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy. Although Punch Drunk Love was critically acclaimed, audiences just weren't interested. You're the Adam Sandler of this house, and nobody wants Punch Drunk Love. Just give us water, boy. That same year, more people paid to see Sandler and Mr. Deeds, although critics panned that film for its predictable story and lowbrow humor. Sorry about that, dude! Since comedic Sandler was easier to sell than serious Sandler, he naturally returned to more mainstream comedies like Anger Management, I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, and The Longest Yard. Long way from the big city, huh, superstar? 
every once in a while, Sandler would still stretch his acting muscles, playing a loving father in Spanglish, and a man suffering from PTSD in Rain Over Me. They adored me, Johnson. But they did. Sandler seemingly tried to please both sides with Click, but like with many of his previous comedies, it did not fare well with critics. Oh my god, I'm a fat guy! Look at me. <laughs> On the other hand, Funny People was an interesting reflection of Sandler's life. You need me. You need me. I'm not gonna be here forever. Who's gonna amuse you? He played George Simmons, a comedian recently diagnosed with cancer, who, although he possesses talent, chooses to waste it on idiotic comedies. Sound familiar? In the end, Simmons beats cancer, but doesn't seem to really learn much following the experience. If anything, it's strongly suggested he's going to continue his cycle of self-destructive behavior. Is it true? It's true. Yes! yes. All right, all right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Something similar can be said about Sandler's career trajectory. Every time he took a step forward with a challenging role or even a relatively funny movie like Fifty First Dates, he fell back on old habits with comedies like Grown Ups and Just Go With It. Awesome, awesome, you guys, you guys are so... I'll see you in a minute, okay? I love you. <laughs> Although Sandler's comedies had a long-standing reputation for being crude, he finally took it to a whole other level with Jack and Jill. Okay, I'm ready, let's go! Oh, oh my god! Remember that Gap Girls SNL sketch where Sandler and David Spade did drag? Imagine that stretched out to 91 minutes, except with Sandler doing a far more irritating voice. That's why he was mad, because he was being good to me, and I, I did what I did, and I'm a jerk, and I have to call him, and I'm gonna straighten the whole family vacation out, I promise, oh, this is so cool! The film was seen as insultingly lazy even by Happy Madison standards, winning Razzies in every category. Soon after, Sandler's loyal followers started to catch on to his condescending shtick. The immature gags, the predictable storylines, the shameless product placement, the fact that he selected projects based on where he could vacation. Unlike Billy Madison or The Wedding Singer, which were childish yet funny, Sandler's more recent comedies had nothing resembling effort, causing That's My Boy, Blended, and Pixels to all underperform. <laughs> Pac-Man's faster than I remember! Despite no longer being a guaranteed box office draw, Sandler's leap to Netflix proved that he still had a following. The Ridiculous Six, The Do-Over, and The Week Of got trashed by critics, but proved successful for the streaming service regardless. Murder Mystery, which received mixed reviews, went on to become the most popular Netflix title of 2019. Will you stop questioning everything I do? Well, everything you do is questionable. In fact, not all of Sandler's Netflix collaborations have been critical duds. The Meyerowitz stories once again proved that he's not only funny, but truly gifted as an actor. You remember that song I wrote about that guy who worked at your studio who you never remembered his name? His name was Myron, but you called him Myron. Sandler returned to his stand-up roots with 100% fresh, alluding to notoriously low scores on Rotten Tomatoes. Shortly after that, Sandler hosted SNL for the first time. Hey buddy, last moved on, but you still bring us so much joy. Make my kids laugh with your YouTube clips, oh Tommy boy, yeah. Between 100% Fresh and SNL, Sandler earned two primetime Emmy nominations in 2019. Sandler was finally charming audiences and critics simultaneously. His winning streak culminated with Uncut Gems, a crime thriller directed by the Safdie brothers. You having a good time? Yes. Sandler played Howard Ratner, a compulsive gambler slowly but surely digging his own grave. While we have seen Sandler give great performances before, this was arguably the first time we'd seen him portray a character with such energy, almost channeling a young Al Pacino. Winning Best Actor at the National Board of Review, Sandler seemed poised for an Oscar nomination. Like Jennifer Lopez, Eddie Murphy, and other actors who made a comeback that year, though, Sandler got no love from the Academy. It means nothing. It meant nothing. Please. Give me another shot. Sandler took the snub in stride, tweeting that he could at least stop wearing suits. Oscar nomination or not, Uncut Gems may mark a new beginning for a more mature Sandler. This is me. This is how I went. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 
Of course, we thought the same thing after Punch Drunk Love and his other dramatic turns. Sandler even said that if he didn't get an Oscar nomination, he'd make a bad movie on purpose. Then again, Sandler did also re-team with the Safties for a six-minute short entitled Goldman v. Silverman, suggesting that he may not be done with the indie scene. Whether his next project is funny, dramatic, experimental, or intentionally awful, we have a feeling that Sandler will keep things fresh. He's the hunt. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Is The Sandman's next movie gonna be an uncut gems or like a Jack and Jill? Also, what is your favorite Adam Sandler performance? Mine is The Wedding Singer. Yes. Let us know in the comments or come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayden. Also, be sure to like and subscribe and please watch this other video.